Welcome back everybody and today we're going to try painting the Warhammer model of the month for May which is an Adeptus Arbites Arbitrator and uh, this is obviously going to be a bit of a study in black and we haven't painted a black model before and a quick YouTube search brought out a plethora of options in how to actually put uh, the color on the model most of them start with a black base coat or a prime uh, quite a few of them use a xenothal white highlight over the top of which they might use black inks or dry brush using dark colors progressively moving to silver or grays and then white and uh, a black wash perhaps or even using a white xenothal with black speed paint directly onto that for simple and quick there's even opportunity to just stipple on blues and greys uh, so many choices uh, don't know where to start but seeing as i've got some speed paint seems like a good enough reason to try the option of doing a black base coat xenothal white highlight uh, using a white ink and then try using the black speed paint so quick assembling of the model uh, now this time like I did with the last one I'm going to do it in uh, sections I think sub assemblies makes it a lot easier given that also during the assembly you can't really put the gun on the holster very well or on his leg uh, so it just seemed easier leave his head off and uh, we'll do a couple of bits and pieces and do the majority of the model and uh, red, have a red hot go at trying to create something that looks half reasonable so starting with the black uh, just give a good solid coat all over the whole model to start as a foundation base for the guy and uh, in the meantime while we're waiting for paint to dry and everything uh, confuse yourself even more with looking at all the options that can be done uh, recent uh, video that came out by Artis Opus looking at kind of the slap chop method and a applying uh, colors but then doing further detail which uh, I prefer the detailed option rather than doing just a basic simple sort of finish so I thought well that seems like a reasonable sort of approach so do the xenothal and then apply the black uh, speed paint now reading upon this most people say to avoid streaking and various other sort of aberrations in the paint the trick is to try and stick to applying it thickly over one body part at a time rather than slapping it on the whole model all over the shop and ending up with tide marks and patchy sort of finish so that's what I did just applied it progressively starting on one leg moving to the next and then up the torso now at that point in time I didn't think about looking at the box art and determining that uh, actually he does have clothing on underneath the armor which is exposed but I painted everything in black anyway uh, not the end of the world because at least then you've got a consistent base from which to work so that seemed to do the job anyway so uh, I did later on determine when I came to doing some of the leather pieces uh, in the sub assemblies that I hadn't painted black over them and when I tried using the color that I was using on the model it didn't look particularly good so I ended up having to actually apply speed paint to the holster and the pouches at the back before I then put the brown on so that I got a consistent finish and look to the color so that was something you learn along the way uh, but ultimately we got most of the color on and it didn't look too bad uh, the head clearly was done separately as well uh, just all over a uh, simple sort of approach uh, trying to get a reasonable sort of finish on it haven't really slapped the paint on before so I wasn't too sure exactly how it was going to work but you can even see just there looking at it that it starts to pull away from the edges uh, which is exactly what it's supposed to do uh, giving you a little bit of a highlight and interestingly going back and comparing uh, the speed paint completed uh, coloration to the undercoat black there is an obvious sort of gray coloration to it so it's a little bit different now once everything was dry it was okay yes he is wearing clothing on underneath uh, and I thought well color wise it's sort of a grayish color I don't want to paint it black because black on black you're not even going to differentiate the two 
and I uh, thought well it's bead paint it is slightly translucent let's try using the white over the black and see if we get a gray out of it rather than trying to apply a gray and because it's a speed paint it hopefully will sort of provide some of that uh, sort of separation uh, and edge sort of highlighting uh, do some of the work for us so applied that on to the areas that I could see all except his arm uh, so bypass the left upper arm uh, caught that towards the end but uh, that doesn't matter fortunately it didn't sort of affect anything but the end result wasn't too bad in terms of toning down the clothing uh, what I did notice was that there wasn't enough graduation in the coloration in terms of dark and I've used the cloudburst blue before a speed paint and uh, trying to go for a chromatic black so I applied that to sort of some of the low shadow areas to try and increase the darkness there and give a bit more gradient and add a little bit of subtle coloration to the model so it just isn't plain black and uh, that seemed to work relatively well hard to say if there's any reactivation on these speed paints these are speed paint 1.0 but uh, the result seems to sort of color it up a little bit richer adds a nice bit of uh, sort of texture that you can sort of see uh, so I wasn't too uh, unhappy with the sort of the end result of putting on sort of the base coats which was great uh, and then obviously uh, the next step is to start playing with the detailing on the model using a bit of slaughter red another speed paint uh, just doing that for the body of the gun uh, clearly you can see uh, that there was some a little bit of careless application of the black around the handle of the well actually his hand and holding onto the base of the gun and instead of actually going over with white because the this stuff's translucent uh, I just painted over the top of it which made it look quite patchy when it was finished uh, so I just worked in with that later on and uh, stippled the uh, weapon with some dark uh, black paint just to sort of give it that grim dark kind of feel and uh, therefore that staining wasn't such an issue but clearly if you want it to be nice and clean uh, that's not the way to do it you're better off just putting another base coat of white on underneath and starting fresh so that everything has a uniform appearance and that would have looked a lot better uh, so relatively happy with how that looked uh, next option then was doing the shoulder guard and wasn't happy with any of the generic golds I did have the option perhaps of doing a silver and then doing a speed paint uh, color over the top like pallid bone or something to make it look artificial but instead I actually chose the three air colors and mixed them roughly one to one so three parts of each and uh, came up with a sort of a very flat looking sort of brassy color which I thought suited the model much better uh, that color then I also applied to uh, the detailing on the weapon and uh, so that came out relatively well the option therefore was later on to try and darken it down perhaps uh, so I was considering using washes and we'll get to that in a minute uh, but here I decided okay I want to darken up the ports on the gun and just using the cloudburst blue again speed paint and letting it run in because I found in the past doing pin line washes with the cloudburst blue seems to work for whatever reason it must be the consistency of that I also chose to mix that in with the silver plate metal to do uh, the metallic components of the weapon uh, just to give it a little bit of color uh, sort of bluey metal a couple of applications were required uh, the one wasn't really sort of thick enough it seemed to obviously make it a little bit thinner by diluting it uh, but uh, it certainly added a nice sort of silver patina to the weapons uh, I did do a couple of applications on the slide because I'd uh, painted part of it red uh, so jiggling enough tried to reactivate the red to mobilize it so that you couldn't see that uh, the purity seal uh, do a base coat of white and everyone seems to with the visor on the helmet uh, put white in there and so what I tried to do was apply a thin white coat across the whole surface and then come back and put a little bit more in the center uh, just to emphasize where the white was 
the idea therefore being that uh, if I put a color over the top, especially if it is another speed paint, uh, where it is more white, it will actually appear brighter. Uh, so that was the idea. Also doing the stripe on his head, that was a little bit fiddly trying to keep within the lines because the paint, if you put it on too thick, has a tendency to run into the grooves, which really sort of doesn't look particularly flash. Uh, so just being cautious there was the way to go. I didn't want it to be too stark white. I'm going for a more muted sort of color scheme, trying to go for sort of a bit of a grim dark look. And so just put on one coat and left it sort of wishy-washy in some respects. And then uh, all the strapping just used sort of an oak brown over the black uh, to give it some coloration. I did go back afterwards and then do some sort of uh, weathering on that with lighter and darker sort of colors just to make it look like it's been a bit abraded and uh, sort of kicked around a little. So it was just a matter of finding all the pieces on the arm because it's sort of tucked away. Uh, he's got the pouches on his uh, belt and then there's also the holster which I was doing separately and also the pouches on the back just so that I could properly treat uh, them without having to worry about all the other bits and pieces and there's also a strap apparently that runs down the middle of his back that looks like it holds his belt up so don't forget to do that one and uh, so just a couple of coats of brown just to uh, sort of color that up sufficiently did the job and you can see that I actually put the black on the holster. I did try the white initially and it just looked terrible. So I cleaned it all off and uh, then uh, made sure I had a sort of a white base, put on the black speed paint again and then built that up. Now for some of the other detailing like the visor and the lenses, that uh, he has on his helmet and also on his chest. I thought I'd use a magenta ink. I've got some inks kicking around and also on the purity seal. Uh, they tend to be somewhat uh, pigment rich uh, at times and uh, go on without uh, being too translucent rather than using speed paints or something like that. Uh, but they do, if they're thinned out a little bit, do work quite well, particularly in the visor where I found that it did have that nice, clear, sort of transparent look uh, that the white sort of shone through. Uh, so it got a reasonable result uh, on the, the helmet. So somewhat happy with that. Easy to do, one application, and it was finished. So it all came down to making sure the base coat was right. Uh, apparently he has a stripe on his shoulder and putting the red on the black was never going to cut it because again I wanted to use the speed paint similar to what was used on the weapon and therefore I had to actually go through the grief of trying to do a stripe twice so I did a white base uh, therefore the red would show through it rather than the dark uh, black sort of color which would have made it what, a bit too sort of an obvious uh, so putting the speed paint directly onto the uh, white made it look a lot better. It gave it a little bit of a pop, uh, but it was still muted sufficiently enough because I only did one coat of the white, so it was more like a gray. Uh, it did look a little bit patchy, but uh, by the time you put a little few scratches and nicks on it, it probably isn't the end of the world. Uh, just finishing off the helmet, I detailed the skin, just a thin coat of uh, a light color over the face there, just to at least look, make it look flesh colored. Getting towards the end, uh, yay, uh, and what we started to do then was obviously do some edge highlighting. Uh, now there really is a bit of emphasis already because of the speed paint, but just putting some silver uh, to make it look like there's a bit of chipping around some of the components, particularly the edges of the armor where it protrudes. Uh, also did it on the antenna of his little radio on the back, little bits and pieces on the pauldron and other elements of the armor just to give it that sort of uh, sort of worn and abraded look. Uh, we did go back in then later and use a different color uh, just to try and uh, sort of produce some chipping. And that was a bit of a hit and miss, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but uh, we did give it a go anyway, trying to create a more of a weathered sort of pattern uh, on the armor. Similarly, we did that on the leather. Uh, just with the lighter coloration, particularly around the edges, and then a few strikes uh, sort of across the, the face of it and everything to make it look like it's been scratched up. 
uh, and it sort of it gives it that sort of kind of kicked around sort of look that uh, we were trying to go for so I wasn't too unhappy with uh, the detailing there so all in all wasn't too bad I did try doing uh, it took two efforts to actually get some writing this time around on the purity seal uh, just putting some black detailing uh, it all comes down to the quality of your brush used the wrong brush and it looked atrocious so I just had to go over with white again and then once it's dried just use the speed paint uh, it's a pallid bone color that I tend to use which gives it a sort of a parchment coloration uh, just to uh, tone it down a little make it look a bit birthy uh, now we're getting on to the uh, sort of the inking process trying to go very subtly with a very fine brush to apply scratches and marks and uh, sort of uh, you be the judge as to how effective it kind of looks uh, but rather than doing stippling or using a sponge approach which I've used in the past to do weathering where you can spot on colors I was just trying to use the brush and it was a bit hit and miss with application to be perfectly honest uh, and then for novelty value because I got myself some null oil everyone seems to use that on everything I thought oh we'll give this a go on the model so I'm uh, not so exactly sure how it was going to finish out I thought I'll try it on the boot first and was bitterly disappointed with the end result because it made it look like a glazed donut when it dried and it was like oh dear that's not the finish I was going for uh, which meant I had to repaint the boot so uh, a bit of a light sort of coloration back on with the speed paint and then uh, sort of had to use some of the light gray uh, or actually the white uh, speed paint over the top to try and get that sort of edge uh, sort of showing through again so that was a bit of a tedious effort uh, but a lesson learnt that I don't think it works particularly well on blacks if you're going for a matte finish uh, so finally we got to reassemble everything put the little sub assemblies back on and it was just a matter of gluing each of the pieces on so you've got the uh, little pouches on the back with his baton uh, and then the holster which is a bit fiddly to get in underneath his hand because it's such a close fit and lucky last is putting on his head uh, which uh, after you peel out the blue tack uh, because I put that on prior to painting to make sure it had plastic to adhere to the plastic glue uh, with his little head bobbles around a bit but we got it stuck on and uh, we've sort of got an assembled arbitrator which was fantastic and uh, in a further video which I'm going to do after this I'm going to talk about how I did the base because I was playing around and I didn't want something simple and created a dead Xenos thing that has been gibbed uh, so I'll go into a little bit of detail on that but a little bit of super glue on the little guy's feet and stuck him on and we've reached the end of the video and here is the end result of a chipped and battered arbitrator who's uh, looking like he's using his shotgun to blast the crap out of gooey creatures and the end result seems okay at the end of the day with the shoulder pad I just use a very thin uh, amount very thin down amount of speed paint just over that uh, just used some black just to give it some darkening I didn't want to use any washes or anything I was going to use the null oil but uh, yeah no uh, it just makes things too shiny so I was uh, happy enough just to leave it exposed the way it was the matte finish tends to make it look pretty gritty rather than actually going with an oil wash I will attempt oil washes soon uh, but for this one I was kind of uh, satisfied enough with the way it finished out so hopefully uh, you've managed to get your way through this you like the end result and uh, as always thanks very much for taking the time to look at these videos and thanks for everyone for subscribing and we'll catch you in the next one see you later